Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Licensing Committee. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, we'll get straight into the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. I've received apologies from Councillor Fergood, Councillor Maycock, Councillor Wade, and Councillor Wadrup. Do we have any other apologies that anybody's aware of? No? Okay. Um, agenda item number two is the minutes of the previous meeting. Is it your wish that I sign those as a true record? Moved by Councillor Clement, seconded by Councillor Cooper. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, uh, agenda item number three is declarations of interest. Do we have any? I'll take the silence as no declarations. Thank you. Um, okay, just before we go into the agenda, I um, just want to just explain to everybody. Um, why we've got two additional meetings and why this one's only got one item on the agenda. So the um, when I spoke to the officers a couple of weeks ago, um, it was brought to my attention that the street trading policy wasn't going to be ready in time for the last meeting um, and also that we'd got a tax driver who we needed who needed to come in front of the committee. Um, with the taxi driver, um, it needs to go behind closed doors, uh, exclusion of press and public. Um, so what I didn't want to do was have this policy at the start of the agenda um, and we had a taxi driver waiting around um, or we tag this onto the end of that meeting. That meeting takes a lot longer than than we would anticipate, which, which does happen sometimes with these things. Um, and then the street trading policy didn't get a chance to get looked at. So that's why I've asked for the extra meeting. Um, so that's just to let you all know that's why we're we're here this evening. So um, again, thank you all for uh, for attending this evening. Um, and then before we go in as well, Sarah's just got a bit of an update for us on um, the points scheme and some points that have been issued. So I'm just going to ask Sarah just to brief everybody on that. Thank you, thank you Chair. Um, on the 27th of June of this year, um, at approximately five to nine, I was travelling down Litchfield Road and onto Litchfield Street and a private hire vehicle pulled out in front of me. I first witnessed it was a private hire vehicle because he displayed the Acorn um, display plates on the side of the vehicle. Um, he th I then noticed that he hadn't got his licence plate affixed to the rear of his vehicle. It was in his windscreen at the back. Um, so I was thinking to myself, right, okay, noted. He then proceeded to start smoking in the vehicle and was quite blatant about smoking in the vehicle with his hand outside. Um, so I got back to the office, compiled everything, and ultimately he was then issued with four points for failing to display his um, plate as required. He was then awarded three points for smoking in his vehicle, um, and then uh, I passed the details to Wendy, and she then issued the driver with a fixed penalty notice. Um, which has since been paid. Um, so the case has been reported, I believe, on Facebook and in the Herald. Um, so it's just a good um, indication that the point system is being used by officers when we see blatant breaches um, occurring. Um, and hopefully he's learnt his lesson. Thank you. Thank you for that update, Sarah. I think it's just worth pointing out to me as well. He was, you've given him some guidance on to rectify the issues as well, haven't you, as well? As, um, so well, we weren't just straying there with points. We have given him some guidance on what he should be doing. Um, and I would encourage anybody, if you do see any of the taxi drivers that are, 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 are breaking any of the rules, to uh, to bring that to the officer's attention. Okay, uh, we'll move into uh, agenda item number four, uh, which is the street training policy 2024 to 2026. And I'll hand over to Sarah for this one. Thank you. Tamworth Borough Council is the licensing authority responsible for considering applications for a range of activities that require a street trading consent under Schedule 4 of the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1982. The Council has adopted the provisions of Schedule 4 to regulate street trading and allows the Council to set a policy, conditions and fees. There is currently no policy in force for these activities and it is considered necessary and appropriate for such a policy to be prepared, consulted upon and published. 
The draft policy sets out Tamworth Borough Council's approach for managing street trading in the borough in order to ensure that applications for this type of authorisation are considered and determined in a fair, consistent and transparent manner. Furthermore, in order to facilitate a street trading regime, streets within the borough need to be designated consent streets. Members are asked to consider whether to designate the whole of the borough or to exempt certain areas, and details are contained on page six of the draft policy. And the committee is asked to recommend that the draft street trading policy be approved for public consultation and also to consult on the proposed area of consent. Thank you. Okay, um, just uh, to note for members, if you've got a printed reports pack, it's page 16. Um, I know everybody gets confused by that sometimes. Has anybody got any questions for Sarah or Wendy on this policy? <coughs> Councillor Clements. Thanks, Chair. I think um, if we just go back to the last meeting where myself and Councillor Kingston raised issues around Rotary and Royal British Legion, it's clear that on at item G that we are exempt as um, we're raising money for charity, so I'm pleased that that's gone in. Um, so... If I'm understanding this correctly, you're asking us to look at any streets we think should be not consented. Yes. Yeah, the reason um, behind asking members to decide whether we should consent all streets or whether certain areas should be exempt is that um, the events team work quite hard to... to um, to promote certain events within within the borough. They see that a street trading regime, take for example in the castle grounds, might be a barrier to getting certain traders to trade at the event, um, as it will be another consent, another application and another fee for those traders. Um, the events team for Tamworth Borough Council do promote these events, but we also have external event organisers using certain areas within Tamworth Borough um, that possibly may feel that it, it's another kind of hurdle for them to, to overcome. Um, so that's really why we've put that choice, choice in there. The only reason I asked is obviously I, I don't have any issues. The only one that did spring to mind was um, outside the almshouses um, because of the people that are living there. Um, but I, I'm, I don't see an issue with any of the streets. I think it should be as and when we need to, a lot for the reasons that you've just said. Thank you, Councillor Clements. Uh, Councillor Jay? Um, What's not clear for me from what I've read anyway is what are you, what's the problem you're trying to fix? I mean, it doesn't feel like there's loads of traders on all streets anyway that have the, the main areas. What, what are you trying to fix with it? Because it doesn't, it's not clear. It actually just talks about actually you've consented with other stakeholders and they think it's going to make things more difficult. I don't know why I'd want to make the environment more difficult in town for anyone that wants to trade and make money and bring things to our town. So what are you trying to fix? Wendy? Um, so my understanding was it's already regulated within a different department, but it's very ad hoc, so there's no consent streets at the moment, there's no actual proper regulation, so a permission is given, but there's no conditions in relation to, to that, no, no checks and balances, so anybody could, in theory, set up without a consent in this street or any any street and other than if there are food premise which would be registered and inspected there is no regulation on public liability insurance how they set, set their stands up and just general health and safety so that's why we're looking at bringing in consent streets and regulating it officially so that if there are people that are appearing and not getting the right consent we can do something about it whereas at the moment we can't Councillor Jay. Okay, just to be able to do if, if the situation arises, but it, it's not arising, or have we got examples of it happening, or is it just a theoretical thing one day if it happens, we've got policy for that? 
difficult for us to comment on the fact that it's not in our directorate and hasn't been it's literally just been passed to me as a service for us to start regulating so it's been dealt with by other departments but not in in an official capacity i don't believe so there's never actually been a full policy and a full regulation of the the matter um so the it's been passed to to us to get a real grip on it and to hence bring the policy to you ensure that the legislation is in place as well and adopted so they can be regulated appropriately um. councillor kingston yeah, thank you. Um, just to check on this, and from some clarification for myself, um, presumably this street trading policy would cover things as simple as an ice cream van going around the streets. So when this comes into play, if it's approved and all that sort of stuff, it is vital to ensure that we have things like ice cream vans going around our residential areas, <laughs> that really the only exception is the A5 bypass. Otherwise, our dear old ice cream men are going to struggle to get round and deliver their wares to, to everybody. Um, and presumably, on the back of that, if an ice cream van has to have a licence, then you can restrict said number of licences for said number of streets. So therefore, you could stop com excessive competition. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. When we would get... Um Ice cream vans would come under like a roaming license. So together with the application, we'd expect a list of streets and a list of times that they intended to visit those streets. And we certainly wouldn't give consent to two ice cream people covering the same area. And just to come back about the um, arms houses, I see it's a very valid point, but you could license for that when you issue a street license so, for example, by specifying the time something could operate, if we had, say, a trader wanting to set up outside said arms houses or in any other residential property for that matter, you could regulate the hours under which that trader could operate. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So there'd be no need to sort of say no to the arms yeah. houses area because you could, li you could legislate against that in the licence. That would be stipulated on the consent that would be issued, yes. Councillor Jay, then Councillor Keeper. So is the intention that that has to pay a fee to get this licence? So let's say an ice cream van, they're going to have to have a new cost that they didn't have before to continue doing what they're already doing without an issue, without issue at the moment. Is that right? Yes, I believe so. We had, uh, I don't think when the other department are regulating the ice cream, ice cream vans or the mobile traders, it's more no. a few few fixed ones in town that they've been doing, but it's been very ad hoc. So yes, yeah, all all traders, street traders, would be paying a fee. Okay, um, <laughs> I feel like this is like a, a sledgehammer to cracker, not here. Like the, we, you know, these these things have been going on for you know decades. Many, many decades about issue. Even there's two, two physical street kids sometimes go, I don't want that one because it's Steve or whoever's coming later. There's, there's not been an issue that I'm aware of. Um, I feel like it, it'd be better to do it another way to say, like you mentioned, the arms houses, whether certain areas you wouldn't want something to be put on because it'll affect the elderly residents, or whatever, to just have a policy for those areas, you know, and, and leave the rest because it seems to be working fine. To answer that, I should comment. Councillor Keeper. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Jay sort of touched on what I was going to say. Um, I, with regard, with the example given with the ice cream vans, um, I don't want to get into too much of an economic debate around the uh, proviso of 99 ice creams, but um, if we are going to put barriers in place to the, the, the free market economy operating with regards to 99 ice creams, essentially, if you was to say to an ice cream van, you have that street, and you would say to another ice cream van, you have that street, um, what's stopping the ice cream vans from just charging whatever they want for an ice cream? If my, if my daughter goes out with a fiver, I know, if, I mean, she doesn't normally come back with much change, to be fair, but uh, I imagine the change she does get gets pocketed. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I think, I, I think, Thomas, I think uh, Councillor Jay's right. I think we're, we're sort of bordering on 
um, controlling the market a little bit. I think it's going a little bit OTT. I think he's right. I, th I think we, we need to look at where people shouldn't be allowed to trade rather than making some kind of huge, complicated, overarching framework that's probably going to end up reducing people's earning potential through license fees and, and whatnot, through um, market conditions being going up, whether that's um, various different street traders, if, we, if we're going to start to segregate them. Ultimately, what what is it that means when you go and buy your ice cream, it's £3.50 and not £13.50? There's only one thing, and that's market conditions. The fact that Steve might come round the corner after going past Councillor Jay's uh, posh kids who won't buy from Steve, he'll, 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 he'll charge my kid £1.50 for an ice cream because you know, he, he knows that um, he can't put it up too much because otherwise somebody else will come round the corner. I think, I think that's, for me, that, I, I worry about that if we're going to go down the road of segregating sort of people are saying right you can only operate there you can only operate there i think i think councillor jay's right let's um let's just tell people where they can't trade keep it councillor kingston um i note that the there are various offenses in annex one that you specify um that would exempt somebody from being issued with a street traders license and this is one area which i find quite easy to agree with because um working in the sphere that i do i'm more than acutely aware of the fact that at this present moment in time if unlicensed then we can have traders um and we've used many times this evening the example of the ice cream van um peddling their wares absolutely fine the 99.9% 99, 99 .9 of ice cream traders are brilliant and legitimate and go about their business, but there will always be some, and we've got a county lines issue in this town. So we can see here in Annex 1 on page 32 of the printed version where there's a list of offences that would prevent or prohibit somebody from receiving or being granted with a street licence. Um, so that satisfies me a little bit that we are trying to reduce the risk to um, residents and vulnerable people out there. Um, what would be a typical fee for a street licence though? I'm not going to hold you to it, just a rough sort of fee. What would your average ice cream man be expected to pay for his licence to trade? An annual uh, street trading consent um, would be £1,881, I believe. Um, ice cream vans, because they typically only run for about six months of the year, so the fee would be half of the £1,881. Occasional licences for your ad hoc, um, say if you burger van in the town, say, would be forty. Three, yes. £43 pounds per day. I've got Councillor Wood uh, and then Councillor Jay. Probably something for another time and another meeting, but surely we should, with the way the markets and street traders have gone in the town centre, which is it's diminished over the years, surely we should start looking at the fees as well, at helping them out, because as other councillors have said, looking at the baseline, before they even make a profit, they have to think about the costs they have to endure first. Markets are separate, so this oh, okay. doesn't doesn't cover the, the market charter and the regulation of that. These are new fees that were adopted um, in the last last sort of fee report that came through to, to yourselves back in March, so they are part of the, the council's budget. And we're Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I think I think the fees are excessive. We all had a bit of a gasp when when you mentioned them. Um, sometimes I, I always, you know, we have events on. I always speak to the traders. I like to see how it's gone that day. And some of them have done really well. 
And some of them have got like, you know, that says food, they've still got loads left. And you can tell by the end of the day, with all the people they've had there expecting it to be busy, they're probably not going to make, have made that much money. So £43 a day to them might be the difference between the owner making some money that day or not. Um, and to an ice cream man or woman, ice cream person, you know, <laughs> uh, £900 out of your profit is, you know, for someone that's self-employed, that's, that's a big chunk. And I think this is just a... Well, I think you can gauge from my, my opinion here. I'm not going to vote for this. This is a, absolutely, sorry to say, but a, a terrible idea, in my opinion. And we should be looking at where they shouldn't do it rather than excessively penalising them. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Uh, Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think uh, to come back to uh, Councillor Kingston's point with regarding county lines and the issues on page 32 of the report, I think it's I think it's a great idea in principle that what we're looking at is is sort of having a look at the clear list of offences that, that people you know that, that are in there. But the offences that are in there are already sort of held held to account for for you know various laws and other other misgivings. If if I walked up to an ice cream person uh, and bought uh, bought an ice cream. And it, you know, they, they, they were using dodgy ice cream or something. I would report that through Environmental Health or whoever. You know, you know what I mean? There, there's various other agencies that can look at that. I think writing in a load of stuff in a report that we're going to charge people to sign up to, um, that we can't police ourselves. Because that's how how would we police that? We'd be asking for DBSs on application, which doesn't currently happen. So we're unable to know if if your ice cream person has got a history um, of offences. Yeah, okay, I, I understand that, but that DBS check is only valid for that point in time, for one. And for two, again, I think that any of these sorts of offences that there would still be stipulations in a, in a court of law that would mean, uh, uh, Councillor Kingston's probably more primed to uh, comment on this than I am, but there, there, surely there would be other sort of um, issues that are, are put on you if, you know, should you break the law in a certain way, which means that you wouldn't be able to um, sell ice creams to children, you know, and, and I think that that's, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's going a little bit too far. Thank you. Councillor Jay, and then... Thank you. Um, the DBS point, okay, so let's assume this goes ahead and you, you start getting DBS checks from people. That's quite a process in itself. So either you're going to have a black and white, if they've got an issue on the DBS, we, uh, we don't let them be an ice cream vendor. Or you're going to have to have criteria and assess them on a case by case. And as someone who runs a recruitment firm that vets hundreds of people, I can tell you it's a task and a half. So again, <laughs> You're giving the council this potentially mammoth task for little gain. Unless it's black and white, they've got an issue on the DBS, then they're not allowed the licence, right? That's simple. But then you've got someone who may have had an offence six, seven years ago. They've turned their lives around. They were a drug addict. They you know, had driving offences or, uh, I don't know, drink driving, whatever. They've turned their life around. They can't get a job anywhere because banks and whatever say they can't because they've got a DBS check. The school says no. So what can I do? Right? I'll be self-employed. I'll sell be a street vendor, no one's going to hassle me there, I'm just doing, earning my money, or suddenly the council's going to stop you as well. It, you're, going to have, you're going to create a new problem, potentially, because if you, if you then can't, you, you can't even sell something for a profit, you know, where you won't have a boss and won't have to go for a you know, DBS check, you suddenly can't sell it to the street vendor. What are you going to do then? Go back to stealing or something? Because, you know, potentially creating another, another problem. I just want to clarify the, the DBS. It's a basic DBS that we'll be asking for, so it's not as um, onerous on the applicants as an enhanced DBS. Um, we are used to dealing with the basic DBSs that we have to look at in relation to the personal licence applications. Um, and because we've listed on page 22 or page 32 um, a period of years in which those um, offences would would be lapsed, then we would look at each application on its own merits, which we do anyway with any application. I think I'd just like to stress that 
primary role of street trading for the authority is to regulate the safety. The people are in the public domain and therefore obviously they're trading on the street in the public domain rather than sort of behind the scenes as, as a business and as an authority we have a responsibility to regulate that and ensure that you know people are safe so that's the primary sort of aim of this policy and the regulation at the moment as I said it's very ad hoc my understanding is if some a street trader comes to the council and wants a consent of some thought form they get some kind of consent um, but there isn't really any checks and balances in relation to that and there's plenty of people that are, are just operating without any consent um, and that's what we're trying to bring in is a, a policy where everybody has to comply it's across the board so we deal with everybody in the same same ilk and we've got something to now actually go back to and deal with those traders that don't come and get a con consent Okay, thank you, Wendy. Uh, I'm just going to bring Tina in, and then I've got a few comments to make, and then then we'll. Chair, um, Sarah kind of stole my thunder. I was just going to bring people, members, back to the objectives of this policy, which Sarah's just gone through. We are here there to safeguard our the public out there, um, and that's the primary primary objective of any policy that we set within Tamworth Borough Council. I agree with the policy in itself. Um, but the fees are, I think it's something we need to have a look at. I think the fees are astronomical. Or, you've got to sell a lot of, not, I mean, we keep using ice cream van, but you've got to sell a lot of 99s to get that amount of money back over a year. Um, and I'm not saying that ice cream vans don't sell a lot of ice cream because at events, they certainly do. Um, but so whilst I'm happy with the policy in itself, I would ask that we, we look at the fees and, mm -hmm. and see if there's, because it's not, there isn't a fee there at the moment. Where have those figures come from? Are those what other authorities are charging? Where are we benchmarking? So I'd like to, what's the word? Fling it back your way, if you like. Bat it back, that's the word I was looking for. Yes, you come back on that, thank you. So yeah, those fees were, were calculated and benchmarked against a neighbouring authority, so that's what they are actually charging and, and regulating as well so we're not we're not un unusual and they've been costed costed out as we did with all environmental health fees which came to council and were approved in march did you say yes yeah so they've been they've been to full council and we approved by all of us and were adopted. um in march and i would imagine they're up for, they will be up for review again next year Yep. Once next, we, once next we, year, yeah, once we start unless implementing it. I would imagine said portfolio holders would like to review them earlier. It's not the fees. I I, I completely agree with everybody's points. That, that, that for for this policy itself it seems astronomical, um, but it's not something that we can resolve as a committee this evening. Um, you know, we're we're here to determine this policy and if this policy is right to do what the aim of this policy is not to discuss whether the fees are too expensive, et cetera, et cetera. Um, whilst I, I don't disagree with any comments that have been made this evening around around that, um, I think it, it is um, prudent for us all to remember that that we can't change that or affect that here tonight. Um, so whilst I do take all the comments on board and they are being minuted, um, I think you know we, we need to look at the policy itself. What is the purpose of the policy? What's the aim of the policy? Is it right for Tamworth? Is it right for, for what it needs to do based on the Local Government uh, Act 1982? Um, will it give us as an authority the protections that we need, the checks that we need? Um, and, we, and, and we need to make that decision. Um, I, I'm, like I say, I'm, I, I don't disagree with any of the comments. I'm happy to take all them comments on board. But we, we, you know, there's recommendations within the report that we, we need to discuss as as a group as a committee um which we've not even touched on yet um but we've been discussing prices and and ice cream men for ice cream people um for for quite a period um and and i think like i say they're, they're all valid but but they're not things that we can we can affect this evening um councillor jay is eager to come back on my points there so i'll let him come in yep it's always good to have an example to bring it to life, the, the, the ice cream people. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not against a policy. Obviously, you know, it's, it's extremely important to have policies in place um, for any authority, for any business. 
I just don't think this is just just there yet. Um, I think there are ways to have. You know, we talk about protecting the public. There are ways to you know have simple registers without costing as much, uh, without being um, so in depth as this is. So I think we need a policy, but it's just not not this one yet. Okay. Well, the, the the one of the recommendations is for us to decide as a committee if this draft policy. Um, is relevant and is suitable for public consultation. That is one of our aims this evening. Um, so that's one of the things that we'll be voting on. Is it ready um, at, at this point? Um, take take your, your point on board there. Um, I think unless anybody's got any more pressing questions relating to the policy, Councillor Cooper, I'll come to you in a second. Um, I'll take, I'll take Councillor Cooper's question, but then I think if we can start looking at the recommendations, we'll take them one at a time. Um, so Councillor Cooper, if you want to come in first. Yeah, cheers, Chair. Uh, just uh, just two, two things. Um, the, the, the first one is, do we have any stats that say to measure the issue that we've currently got? Is it, is it a, an absolute sort of trying and pressing issue in the town with regards to um, the, the, the policy? Or is it, as uh, Councillor Jay put, uh, put before, is this, is this a, a sledgehammer to crack a nut? So I think we, for me, for me to feel comfortable in how to judge this as a policy is to understand the actual um, problem from a statistical point of view. And the second thing is the neighbouring um, authority that you use to get the fees from, can you buy an ice cream in that authority anymore? Or are they all over sat Tamworth selling ice creams? <laughs> can, can I, on, on the back of Councillor Cooper's question, can I just ask, how has this policy come about? Is this something that it's come about because of something from local, the, through the Local Government Act? As it, is it something that's come about because um, cabinet members have, have said, we, we want to do this, et cetera, et cetera? Can you just give us a bit of background on to how this has come about, why it's come to the point that it's at today, to hopefully give us a bit more better understanding as to... Because I don't think... The, the way I see it is the policy is not here. Be, I don't think the policy is here because there's a problem in Tamworth. The policy is here because <laughs> it needs to be and we need a policy. The, the policy needs to be in place, but we don't have a policy yet as an authority. That's my understanding, and I'm hoping Wendy's going to clarify that. This is what I'm saying. So if we can clarify that, do we need this policy legally? Um, and, and if that is the case, is that why it's here, or is it something else? Try and give you the best explanation <laughs> we've got, bearing in mind how long we've been at the authority. Uh, it was given to us as a mandate to develop a... Well, the policy was already developed when I started last year and when Sarah, Sarah did another team in Regen were working on it. I think they'd identified that the regulation of street trading was very ad hoc and not fit for purpose. The legislation, I don't believe, had been adopted and consent streets hadn't been determined. Um, it was then identified that it actually sat far better within environmental health due to our licensing regime already. So hence we've been passed the baton to um, take up the draft policy that was written yeah. by the Regen team and then to, to bring it to yourself. So we've just been given a mandate to bring the policy to you, finish developing it, calculate the fees uh, and consider, consider the options, which is why we've also had chats with arts and um, development to work out how it would affect events at the council as well, because we did feel there was a bigger picture there and a, a potential effect of this, poli this policy so I can't say for definite where it came from before it was sort of passed to us but somewhere along the line the council have identified that it hasn't been yeah. regulated effectively and efficiently um, and consistently across the board. Does it need to be regulated? Either that or we shouldn't be giving any consents we can't do a little bit of something and then not of another so. Okay. So, based on that, I, I would say the instruction has been given at some point by Cabinet for this to happen. Um, I would question, based on that, whether it is still something that Cabinet would like to do. Um, and I wonder if we can send this back to Cabinet to for Cabinet to determine if this is still a line that they would like to go down. Um, If we can do that, if we are able to do that, I am happy to do that. Um, Councillor Cooper? Yeah, just to be 
Um, it's going to full council. Right, yeah. okay. So he's going to full council. Yeah, after consultation. Okay. After the consultation, yeah, but before he goes to full council, the instructions obviously don't <laughs> come from cabinet for this policy to be adopted. It hasn't. Sorry, Chair, it's it not a cabinet from? function. So, wh where's the instruction coming from for the for the policy to? Who's giving the instruction to? I'm assuming Anna. So it's come from a cabinet member. I would, I would think. Possibly, can we, can we send this away then, and can? When's the deadline for this to go for consultation? Is there a deadline? No hard deadline there. There isn't a deadline. We've okay. just we've just. Um... Can I? Can I suggest then, um, and I, I'll move this as a as a motion and look for a second. Can I suggest then that we um, we ask you to go away, find out where this instruction has come from, who who gave the instruction, um, and then speak to the cabinet member that is now in place, um, and if this is uh, this is a route. The cabinet still wants to go down. Is everybody happy with that? And can I get a second? Seconded by Councillor Kingston or Councillor Gibber. You are. Can I just amend it a little bit? You can. Uh, can can I request that there's some statistical analysis done around? I I, I was a little bit. I, I'm glad you said what you said because I was a little bit um, reticent to agree that it just goes up to cabinet for a decision. I think that um, everybody everybody should have a. No, I, I know, I know, and that's why I'm glad. But I'm, I'm glad that because there's, there's, there's other people here who aren't members of cabinet who should have, be able to have a say. But if we can amend that yep. motion so that we have a, a bit of bit of numbers behind the decision as well, yep. so it's just not just a decision that that's been made that you know in hindsight. And it, and and I would just like to add, uh, I want to thank you guys for your work that you've done on this. Obviously, you, you've you've done what you've been asked to do and instructed to do. But I think it is prudent at this point because there has been a change. Um, in the leadership within the council um, and within the cabinet to to actually look is this still an area that, that this council wants to go down if this is something that's going to go to full council eventually um, but let's get it right before we get to that point you know we've got no hard deadline so let's let's look at it and, and see if it is something that's still relevant okay so uh, I've moved that that's been second by Councillor Kingston um, all those in... can we just get the wording kind of Right. Can anyone remember what I said? So right. I so we recommend that the policy be referred back to the officers to find out where the initial instruction came from and speak to the current relevant portfolio holder about mm -hmm. whether the policy decision is is still relevant. Yeah. If and the policy is still needed. Yeah. yeah. And and can we, we get some um, some figures? To include some statistics. Some statistics behind them. And where, where if if they decide it's still relevant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if it's decided yeah, it's still relevant. It's still relevant to find <clears throat> statistical evidence. Councillor Jay. Thanks. I was gonna just um just jump on your comment actually. Don't take it personally. We feel like we probably think we've been we've been throwing stones at you, but actually as a as a policy, right? How it's been written and put together and all that kind of stuff, it's good. It's just uh it's just whether the brief was right, that's all. So don't take it personally. Okay, have we got it? So, but, so that the policy referred back to the officers to find out where the initial instruction came from and speak to the current relevant cabinet member and discuss whether the policy is still needed. If they decide it is still relevant, to provide some statistical evidence to support the policy. Okay, everybody happy with that? Okay, all those in favour of that recommendation? Sorry, who moved? It was, uh, it was moved by myself yeah. and it was seconded yeah. by Councillor yeah. Kingston yeah. and we have voted and that is unanimous yeah. and carried. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Sarah, um, for for your for your work on that. Um, and hopefully, if if that comes back, we can uh, we can get that through. But yeah, thanks for that. Um, thank you, everybody, for your attendance this evening. That is the final item on our agenda. Thirty-eight minutes. That's not bad. I think you know it was longer than I thought, and we've we done it properly. So um, yeah, no. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you all for your contributions on that. Um, and um, I will see you a week on Wednesday at the next licensing committee. Thank you very much.